Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance of all British proper. Welcome devotees to morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we'll be discussing on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, Verse 35, and the chapter is entitled The Passing of Vishnu Dev in the Presence of Lord Krishna. And we are very blessed and fortunate to have His Holiness Chandamali Swami with us. We'll be giving the class. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and all good glories to Shri Prabhupada. I used to share the problem with obeisances to Anasuya, who always plays the best kirtans. <laughs> Maharaj, actually, uh, I don't take a drop or credit that it's all Vrinda. She's the one that sets everything up for me. <laughs> Good. Well, you know, like my daughter, like mother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. But if I have a humble request, if you. Can yes, Maharaj, please. You can locate that particular kirtan that Madhava was just singing. Um, I would be happy if you could send it to me. I've never heard that one before. I will. Yes, Maharaj, I will ask Linda to do it right now and send it over to you, Maharaj, definitely. Like, that was electric. As soon as I heard it, I was ready to dance instead of speak. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda said, as she just said, she'll locate it and send it to you, Marge. Thank you. And we got uh, uh, Pariksha Prabhu. He's. How did you feel, Marge? Decided to manifest his transcendental form. This is a whole reason to subscribe to you and to see yourself, Prabhupada. Krishna. Mr. Prabhupada. Okay, so uh, Bhishma Dave, these are prayers. Bhishma Dev is offering to Sri Krishna or about Krishna. Krishna is present and he's in ecstasy after Krishna fought with him. Now it appears that he's moving towards uh, simple prayers now. He stopped all fighting. Now we will hear these beautiful, the most heartfelt prayers of the glories of the Supreme Lord. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Sapari Sakavachum, Nisamya Madhye, Nijampaya, Yor, Balao, Ratam, Niveshya, Stitabati Param, Sainika, Yor, Akshna, Rita Vati Parta Sake Ritir Mamastu. Translation. In obedience to the command of his, command of his friend, Lord Sri Krishna entered the area of the battlefield of Kurukshetra between the soldiers of Arjuna and Duryodhana. While there, he shortened the lifespans of the opposite party by his merciful glance. This was done simply by his looking at the enemy. Let my mind be fixed upon Krishna. Srimad Prabhupada's purport in the Bhagavad Gita 121-25, Arjuna ordered the infallible Lord Sri Krishna to place his chariot between the phalanxes of the soldiers. He asked him to stay there until he had finished observing the enemies he had to face in battle. When the Lord was so asked, he, wanted, he at once did so, just like an order of carrier. The Lord pointed out that all the important men on the opposite side were saying, here is Bhishma, here is Drona, and so on. The Lord being the supreme living being is never the order supplier or order carrier of anyone, whoever he may be. But out of his causeless mercy and affection for his pure devotee, sometimes he carries out the order of the devotee like an awaiting servant. By executing the order of a devotee, the Lord becomes pleased as a father is pleased to carry out the order of a small child. This is possible only out of pure transcendental love between the Lord and his devotees. And Bhishma Dev was quite aware of this fact. He therefore addressed the Lord as the friend of Arjuna. The Lord diminished the duration of life of the opposite party by his merciful glance. It is said that all the fighters who assembled on the battlefield of Kurushik attained salvation by seeing, personally seeing the Lord at the time of death. 
Therefore, his diminishing the duration of life of Arjuna's enemy does not mean that he was partial to the cause of Arjuna. But actually, he was merciful to the opposite party because they would not have attained salvation by dying at home in the ordinary course of life. Here was a chance to see the Lord at the time of death and thus attain salvation from material life. Therefore, the Lord is all good, and whatever he does is good for it. And is is for everyone's good. Apparently, it was for the victory of Arjun, his intimate friend, but factually, it was also good for Arjun's enemies. Such are the transcendental activities of the Lord. Whoever understands this also gets salvation after quitting this material body. The Lord does no wrong in any circumstance because he is absolute, all good at all times. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Vansha Kalpa Tarubhascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patita Nam Pavane Gyo Vaishnavi Gyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare And so there is one particular chapter, which is the first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam in the seventh canto. The Supreme Lord is equal to everyone. Samoham Savabhuteshu Name Dwesastina Priya. He makes this statement himself, and he also solidifies this by uh, his devotees glorifying him in this way. And here, here we have an example of Bhishma Day, who can see by his transcendental vision that although he shortened the durations of life, Krishna shortened the duration of life of the enemy soldiers, that's those on the side of Duryodhana, he was not at all giving them something less than something good. In other words, he was benedicting them. By his appearance on the battlefield, anyone, everyone benefited just by his appearance. And those who knew he, who he was benefited the most. But even those soldiers who died in his presence actually got attainment to the heavenly realms and some actually got liberation. So, um, it says in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the seed giving father of all of the entities. He uses the word father in that translation, in that statement, just to indicate his affection for him, both his position and his affection for the living entities. As a father is always interested in the, in the welfare and happiness of the children, so Krishna is also interested in giving everyone opportunities to improve their life and become happy. Those who take the Krishna consciousness are intelligent because they understand not only what is their best interest, but how to please the source of existence, Krishna. Those who don't take the Krishna consciousness, but somehow or other uh, become favored by the Lord by being killed by the Lord, such in these cases, these soldiers, they are also equally benefited in the sense that, as it says here, if they weren't killed in, in this way, they would be killed in an ordinary way and therefore would not have attained salvation. So the Lord is all good. He's equal to everyone. 
and he is not partial anyone, but it appears that he is partial. And people criticize him for that. Why does one particular person have so many apparently good opportunities for advancement in life and others, no matter how hard they try, they can't advance in life or at the same time, they're in a, a situation that doesn't allow them to. But it is not the Lord's doing that these apparent differences come up in life. It is simply according to the living entity's desires. So if one desires to serve the Lord and please the Lord through that service, then the Lord becomes inclined to help that person by sending them the spiritual master, sending them the scriptures, and many times sending them the holy name, and many times personally appearing on earth. And those who want to enjoy the property of the Lord at the expense of uh, others, they, um, they also get the mercy of the Lord. Either they get killed or they get punished by material nature to correct their wrongdoing, their wrong mentality which leads to their wrongdoing. And that is another form of mercy. So whether it's directly or indirectly, whether it's for the demons or for the devotees or anyone in between, the Lord is always good here. As Prabhupada said, factually it was good for, it was good for the Arjuna's enemies. So um, this is the Lord people today have a difficulty with this thing. There was one particular book that was published about oh, 60 years ago, which was entitled, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? And it was written by a uh, rabbi. <laughs> who obviously was a religious man, Rabbi Kushner, his name was. And um, the book became a bestseller. In fact, if you trace out the history of bestsellers in the world, at least in the United States, you'll find that this is one of the, probably maybe the most, and the one that stayed on the bestseller list the longest. <laughs> Why? And the story goes that this particular rabbi had a son and he was born with a very rare disease called progeria. Now progeria brings one through their whole lifespan in a very short time. So his son died at, at the age of 14 of old age. Now it's a very rare disease, but it is found in certain places in the world more, more than others. Well, this rabbi had a son like that. So he, uh, being a man of God, he was trying to understand what did this child do that caused them, him to deserve that kind of life. And um, he rationalized that God is all good. He didn't, he didn't somehow or other marginalize the Lord's position. He said, God is all good. But then he did mar marginalize on another level. He said, but the, he is not all powerful. So somehow he redefined the Lord's position as being good, but not powerful. Um, and he rationalized it in various types of explanations, saying that, there is the Lord's creation is so vast, and yet he has to manage everything everywhere. And sometimes he inadvertently or whatever way, he, he somehow misses something or misses someone. You know, someone doesn't get the attention and the care that they need. And that's the reason why so-called 
good thing, bad things happen to good people. So that was a bestseller and people start saying, yeah, well, now we got the answer. The devotees at the time also came into this particular discussion. And one of our leading devotees who was actually Ravinder Sarupabhu wrote an article in rebuttal to his particular book, which was a long article. You can find that article. In the, I think there's one book where there's a series of essays written by Ravindra. And in that essay, he says, no, God is all good and he's all powerful. But we can't see why a person goes through different situations because it is all due to their karma, either in this life or in, in previous lives. So he brought in the whole idea of reincarnation. And then from that point of view, explained how living entities appear in this world with apparent def material deficiencies or material benefits, which is the, um, there is a so-called adaptation of a particular subject matter, it's called theosophy. Theosophy is the study of how God works within the world. And it was a terminology that was derived by the Christians, leading Christian priests and others in the, in the Christian tradition, how God works within the world. And they can't seem to rationalize or philosophize or even understand why there appears to be a dichotomy on there's so many people in the world. Two people are born in a similar situation. One is very successful and one is a complete failure. Both are uh, doing their best to achieve, yet one gets all opportunities and the other one doesn't. Or in this case, when someone's born with a disease, or so therefore we find that people can't understand the nature of God, although they some believe that God is all powerful, but maybe he's just he has favorites, and therefore he favors some and he doesn't favor others. Of course, material favors are not real favors anyway. But let's assume that that it is, and using that as an argument, and then uh, people will say, oh, well, this person has been blessed by God. And this person who doesn't get something materially beneficial, uh, somehow they were either neglected by God or being punished by God. That's the best they can do but they don't know that it's the living entities activities that bring about a particular energy, which gives them the results of their activities. Therefore, God is neutral. There's a verse in the ninth chapter of the, of the, uh, the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I'll read the verse, I have the Gita right here. Ninth chapter, verse, I believe it's number 12. It says here, no, it's not 9, 12, it's another. Let me find it here. Mm -hmm. Let's see where is that verse. Hmm. Well, the, I can't seem to find it. Maybe I have the wrong chapter. What it means is that one is getting the results of their activities according to their activities. In other words, we're asking the Lord 
by our activities for a particular type of result. Although our activities are going one way, we're getting a different result. And so we don't really understand how things are working. Krishna, through the material energy for the non devotees and directly for the devotees, is simply resp responding to the way we approach him. As Krishna says, Yeyatam mam prapadyante tams tadai vrajami aham mam avartmana vartante manusha partha sarvasyaha. That as you approach me, I will award you accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. And then he ends by saying, O oh, oh, uh, oh son of Partha, O oh, oh Partha. What Krishna is saying is that uh, I'm like a mirror. And whatever you hold in front of a mirror, that's what you will see. So in the same way, if we want to enjoy the property of the Lord and at the same time be happy, it's contrary. You can't enjoy the property of the Lord and at the same time be happy because these two things don't go because the property of the Lord belongs to the Lord. And those who try to enjoy the property of the Lord without offering the property of the Lord to the Lord in devotion, get the reactions of their activities, which are either good, bad, or mixed. And even if they are good, in due course of time, because of the nature of everything material, which is mutable, it changes into something different. So, um, here we see how the Lord is being glorified by Bhishma Dev by simply saying, simply by his presence in the form of his glance, he was liberating everyone. So this is a glorification of the Lord. And Bhishma Dev can see that. Others who were on the battlefield saw the Lord simply as an enemy. But the devotees, even though Bhishma was fighting against the Lord apparently, he understood who the Lord was and how the Lord works in such a way as to give his mercy according to where, how that mercy is meant to be given. So we can never complain or should never complain about what happens in our life. Sometimes Krishna favors us and sometimes he apparently doesn't. But he always favors his devotee because in the long run, he says, we have that example here. Arjun was about to be killed by Bhishma and there was no question otherwise. But the Lord broke his promise, risked his reputation by breaking his word and just to save his devotee. For, so for the Lord, his devotee is very, very dear to him. And here, there's another example of how dear it is. At the very beginning of the purport, it says that when the fight was going on, or just about to go on, uh, Arjun said to Krishna, drive my chariot. And the Lord did. Now, Prabhupada tells that story, which is really quite deep. There was one Brahmana, he was living in the Sri Rangam temple in South India. And he was given the instruction by his spiritual master to every day read the Bhagavad Gita. And the only difficulty was he was illiterate, so he could not read. But he received the instruction. So his instruction, he tried to carry it out. And he would hold the book and sometimes he would try to read. And the other Brahmanas in the temple would sometimes chide him and make fun of him, knowing he couldn't read what he was trying to. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was coming, he, he passed by this Brahman and he saw him and he could understand this person is a, is a, is a great devotee. 
So he said, oh, Brahmana, what are you doing? I'm reading Bhagavad Gita. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I cannot read because I'm illiterate, but this, because this is the instructions of my spiritual master, I am trying to read. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu observed him, seeing that he was showing some emotions. And he said, I, I could see, my dear Brahmana, you you're crying. How is that if you cannot read? Well, he said, actually, when I see this picture, and he pointed to the picture that's on the cover of Bhagavad Gita, where Arjuna is on the chariot, and, and Krishna is driving the, the chariot. He says, when I see how the, the Supreme Lord, the Lord of all lords, he takes the position of a humble servant to serve his devotee, I feel very, very uh, emotional. In other words, his heart becomes touched by seeing how the, the Lord, although he is the person to be served, takes the humble position in order to serve his devotee. And Mahaprabhu, when he heard that, he said, my dear Brahmana, you have understood Bhagavad Gita. So it's very hard for the devotees to understand how the Lord takes the position of being the humble servant of the devotee. But it's happening to us every minute. Krishna is always helping us every second, reminding us what we should be doing, reminding us what we should not be doing, and at the same time protecting us against dangers and various types of um, impediments. He's there. He's the, what we say, the unseen, the unseen witness. He sees everything, but we cannot see him. Of course, when we develop pure devotion, then Premanjrita Bhakti Velochanena Santa Sadaiva Ridayesha Velokiyanti Yamshan Masundra Chintya Gunasarupyam Govindamari Purusham that this love that is there within the hearts of the living entity becomes awakened when um, the devotee engages fully in devotional service and the Lord reciprocates by in so many ways to protect the devotee, to uplift the devotee, to comfort the devotee, Krishna is always, every minute, every second, he is in the hearts of his devotees, and he's always guiding in one form or another. Of course, it's up to us to be able to be sensitive enough to understand, yes, it's not me that's doing it. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, chivasya chaham, sarvasya chaham ridhisani stone. But that smirti jnana maho koham and cha. You want remembrance? I give you. You want forget and fill this? I also give you. And you want knowledge? It's coming from me. So Krishna is the all inclusive friend of his devotee, always giving that devotee exactly what they need to engage nicely in devotional service. Sometimes he does it directly, and sometimes he does it through the material energy. But he's always attentive to his devotee. And therefore, the devotee is always attentive to think how best to serve the Lord, how best to serve in such a way that the Lord is pleased by the last service. On this verse, and especially in particular this purport, is really one of the intimate statements about the nature of the Lord and how he is not partial at the same time always serving not only his devotees but all living entities in one way or another. Although he is the Lord, what does it say? Asabrita. 
can't remember the first part of that thing. Ekala uh, hmm. Ishwara Krishna Arasabrita. There is only one master that is God, and he's to be served by everyone. But yet that master takes the point, position of a servant and serves his devotees. And uh, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he exemplified that mood of service to his devotees. Not only did he serve them by engaging in kirtan, but he also took care of their personal needs right after he took initiation from Ishwar's Puri after returning from Gaya. He came back and he was um, a humble servant to his devotees. He was washing their clothes, folding the clothes, and in so many ways carrying out menial service. Just to, not only to, because he enjoys doing that, but at the same time to teach that even I am serving. So, what about you? This is the mood of a devotee. A devotee finds most, most happiness when they can somehow or other serve. Okay, so we can uh, open it up maybe for some discussion. Thank you, Maharaj, for such a wonderful class and really um, stressing nice, really important points, especially for devotional life and devotional practice. Would like to ask devotees if you have any questions um clarification uh comments please uh do jump right in or you can raise your hand i'm going down the list to make sure that i don't miss anyone let me see if there are questions uh oh march i will ask my question while others are thinking march as you were speaking um several questions came into my mind but one that that is popping up in my mind is um as devotees march how can we develop the understanding and the mood of adjusting our material life with spiritual as opposed to the other way around because sometimes <laughs> sometimes we put the material first and then we say oh you know but i'm doing service for the lord i have to take care of my family and that's all great but then it becomes like a habit and then the spiritual um uh, commitments go down. How can we adjust that, Maharaj? It's interesting because I've been getting hit with this. Last week I was doing a home program and that was the topic that they gave me. <laughs> and I basically told them, you can't adjust, it's not possible. <laughs> And the reason I said that is because the way we live is not possible. We, we, have our, we have our work in one place, we have our home in another place, we have our spiritual activities sometimes in another place. And uh, we're somehow or other trying to put it all together. But we have a tendency to see that the spiritual can be somehow put aside, at least temporarily, because the material cannot wait. It appears that it has to be done right at that time. Um, but when that's just a certain mindset that has developed, and it's, both, it's basically quite material. When we put our sadhana first and our activities in spiritual life first, we, uh, expand our consciousness where we have more more facilities and understandings on how to organize everything in our life and seeing what is necessary and what is not necessary and those that are necessary that we have a tendency to uh we can have the, the ability not tendency the ability to carry them out without interfering with our spiritual life but as devotees, we have to learn to amalgamate both of these things into one. I just remembered to do this for you, Marge. I'm sorry. Yeah. OK. 
Okay. Um, yeah, try to find that balance. I haven't met anybody who's found the balance yet. So I'm still waiting for that person to appear. It's always, even if you receive some balance, it always go, it becomes imbalanced after a, the reason why there is an imbalance is because both energies, both material and spiritual, have a tendency to be expansive. Not expansive, but expanding. So the more you're engaged in material activities, responsibilities, the more you find that there is more to do. And when you same thing in spiritual life, when you emphasize the spiritual, there is always that's always increasing too. So wherever you put your attention, there's going to be an increase. <laughs> you see, people are going to work and they find themselves having more and more work. They try to minimize it and cut it off at a certain time, but it carries over in some way. So all I see with devotees who are struggling with this particular the particular feature of balance is that they continue to struggle. That's all. So um, I guess say, do your best. <laughs> and um, the, if you look at the day, the way the day is organized according to the the modes of material nature, the mode of goodness is prominent in the early morning hours, the mode of passion in the mood during the day, and the mode of ignorance in the evening. So what does that indicate? That in the mode, the first thing is our spiritual practice. And then during the day, we can put more emphasis on carrying out our duties for family and for occupation. Well, if we have a nice, regular, strong sadhana, uh, we're ready and able to deal with the material aspect of our life, the responsibilities that we have. But if we neglect that, then our material will be also difficult and we'll also feel weak in our spiritual practice. The mode of goodness is prominent from 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. Passion is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And ignorance is 6 p.m. to 2 p.m. So that's basically how it's understood. Of course, the modes are always shifting. So it's not exactly like that. But that's the, that's the division, the division that is given to us. So use those early morning hours for hearing and chanting and worshiping and in the evening once you're finished with your in order to um, counteract the mode of ignorance which becomes stronger in the evening we should be doing kirtan kirtans are very uh, recommended mostly in the evening time we can do kirtan anytime, but the evening, especially if you're doing a daily schedule, it's nice to put kirtan as the evening part of your life. It kind of uplifts you from the day's activities and it gives you, uh, uh, yeah, it, it purifies the consciousness and it pushes back the, the heavy modes that come in the evening time. When the senses and mind are more difficult to control. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Any questions from devotees? Everybody seems to be a little bit quiet this morning. You can ask the devotees to turn on their cameras. Maharaj, you have more power than I do, Maharaj. If you say it, they will listen to you, Maharaj. Um, okay, on behalf of Anasuya, I'm saying turn on your cameras, please. <laughs> okay, we got dear Krishna, he's driving along. Keep your eye on the road. <laughs> Jairati is cooking up in a storm in New York Temple, or well, maybe it's too early yet. <laughs> 
She's just, uh, this is now her sadhana, which is nice. <laughs> we got uh, Anasuya's wonderful mother. She's there. And Ivana from Croatia. She's trying. And Amrata from the Holy Land. And Sringalila from Croatia. Sri Devi from everywhere in the world. <laughs> She's like Narada Muni. She goes here and then everywhere, Marge. Yeah. The problem is when she stops, she finds that she has so many problems. When she keeps moving, she's doing good. <laughs> Narada Muni had the same problem, he couldn't stop. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Anyone has any questions? Please do jump right in and ask your question. Sri Devi looks like she's thinking. It's like right there. <laughs> Swaha has returned after a vacation. Okay. Welcome back. Yes, Namrata, Mataji, please go ahead. Uh, Mataji, this is just a follow-up from what you have asked. So, uh, Maj, I just want, uh, I would just like to share uh, the same question, maybe before a few months, I asked to one of the, one of my guides. So, uh, she told me that uh, your material life will anyways go on. So your spiritual life sh should be, uh, you know, in the foreground and let your uh, material life run in the background. So that is uh, how I got an answer. So, uh, which today you elaborated a little on that. So uh, is, is that what we have to do? I just wanted to, you know, clarify a little. Yeah, she's not saying neglect your material life. She said it will go on. Just take care of it as it comes. Yeah. But keep your spiritual life in the fore. That is very good advice. Extremely good advice. I think she's talking from experience. Yes. Yeah, that's very good advice. Keep your spiritual life in the foreground. Your life will go on somehow. Yes, Maharaj. So I, I, I'm, I could recall this because whenever I have some issue or the other, I, I really remember her statement, you know, very strongly. And somehow this statement has put it in my mind very strongly. And I, I always remember that. So that is what it came to my mind. And I was, I was thinking that I should share. You, you're finding that that's helping you? Yes, Maharaj, it is definitely helping me. I can see from the, the quality of that statement, it's done from realization and experience. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Hare Krishna. That was a very nice point. Yeah, that's going to stick with me too now. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Sri Devi Mataji, you can go right ahead. Thank you, Anasuya. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glory to you, Guru Maharaj. It's exactly on the point of Namrata, what she said is coming to my mind. I just want to share this experience that uh, uh, for the past few days, certain you know material considerations were coming up and I was thinking, no, no, I have to take care of this. I have to take care of this. And if I don't go to temple in the morning, it's okay because I have to deal with this. And boom, that was fully in it, getting anxious, getting this. And then within two days, I realized, oh, oh, this is no good. This is not good for my material or spiritual life. And immediately I got back into the rhythm of going for the morning program. I found my anxiety abating, my worry abating, and I was just becoming more detached and more surrendered to whatever Krishna desires. I stopped being, you know, the controller and pushing for an outcome. 
That's not that's po not possible, Jamin, but you can you can at least lessen the effect of it, but not completely. <laughs> And I realize Mangalarti is a must, Darshanarti is a must, Guru Puja is a must. There's no way I can survive without. I cannot. It just, the material energy is too powerful for me. I just cannot succumb it by pretending that oh, I can deal with it. Two days, if I don't go to the temple, nothing will happen. Big things happen. <laughs> and I will learn that I just cannot afford to, to skip all those things, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I have the same experience. I'm here two doors down from the temple and I have the opportunities to organize my schedule accordingly. And so I try to find that schedule that allows me to facilitate the temple needs in terms of the responsibilities that I've been asked to do from the temple and at the same time, my general service. And so it's a constant uh, evaluation of the situation and seeing where to put your attention and energy at. Make a schedule that is that you can work with and you may also find opportunities to uh, adjust the schedule according to time place and circumstance but i like what namrat said just just keep your spiritual life foremost the material life will somehow go on Thank you, Pridevi Mataji. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Prem Kishori, so nice to see you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. I, I'm sorry, I can't change my name. Uh, so, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. August to Prabhupada, August to you. To you. Um, Guru Maharaj, I think Anusya Mataji brought up a very good talk. And if you can do a workshop with us on that, that will be really, really helpful. Uh, that will be like an application part. First, I have a First, I want to share if I am confirmed with you, if my understanding is proper or not, and then I'll put my question. Is that is that okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. So today, in our Bhakti Gita class this morning, we did chapter 17. And in the, in the last, uh, towards the last part of the chapter, uh, Krishna talks about Om Tat Sat. So, so Om is like the beginning of an activity which is aimed towards eternal. That is, you perf uh, the performer uh, performance of the activity is aimed towards eternal, and also the performer becomes eternal. And that is everything is eternal. The activity is eternal. The result of activity is eternal, and the activity is directed towards eternal. So that's home. That's that, right? But then uh, there is this stages of team development, which uh, a psychologist in, in Harvard brought up in 1960s. Uh, the, the stages of team development is uh, storming, forming, norming, perf uh, uh, performing, and then adjoining. So it starts with storming and, and then ends with adjoining. So basically, I do understand theoretically that spiritual activity is om that's that, but uh, the a material activity is starts with storming and ends with adjoining. That's the theoretical understanding. But the practical uh, conflict is that we work in a very competitive world. And if you don't keep up with the, uh, with the constant change that is happening, and I don't know how do you even keep up with the change that happens, then there is a feeling that, oh, you are lagging behind. Oh, you're lagging behind. So that affects the self-esteem at some level. And that also affects, because I'm not so elevated in Krishna consciousness, that also affects that, oh, so what should I do? Where do I get this time? Uh, uh, how do I like divide myself into 10 different uh, uh, incarnations <laughs> to do everything? So, where, so theoretically, yes, spiritual, spiritual life is to be given the most important uh most importance and uh, you gave that okay do it in the morning uh, but practically the application is difficult so 
how do we keep up i asked this question in one of our bhakti vedanta medical association retreats many years ago to guru bhakti mata ji from texas um she is a internal medicine doctor but she is tabal krishna maharaj's disciple and then she is also very uh, much involved and she is a temple president's wife in texas mm -hmm. at that time i don't know now and i asked her so she said that she herself <laughs> questions this that how why she is still continuing with her practice when she is more convinced more and more about the krishna conscious part of the life uh and she said krishna covers up and then she gave so many examples of how krishna covers up uh if you focus more on krishna consciousness but the person at my level how do you do it maybe we can request a workshop well, um, i know a little um, bit about by your situation and i know that your work schedule is never the same so you're sometimes working during the time where you should be and then most of us are chanting and reading and so uh, you have a very difficult schedule i mean and you're also on call too so um i think in your situation you have to see how how your schedule is uh, keeps getting adjusted according to your occupation which is the main thing that keeps pulling your schedule in different directions and then try to set up some kind of system of of, of um, organization where you can work in that ever fluctuating ever adjusting schedule and then be ready to adjust um i'm similar i've had that similar experience when i travel because sometimes our travel times or during the times where we we should be chanting or reading and our rest gets thrown off our 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 uh, prashadam times get changed so we keep adjusting but keeping your mind on krishna during all of this really helps is not only helps but it's needed because you can get kind of what we say pulled into a more than as you say you you start to feel like you're not up to the par or you're up to the standard if you you're going to going to have to remain krishna conscious through all of these uh what we say up and down that you are constantly being faced with so somewhere in your schedule each day you have to have a time when you can really sit down and chat and uh, focus and that has to be placed in the schedule somewhere I can't say where with you because I know your schedule is, is somewhat erratic, not erratic, but it's according to the hospital. So uh, you have to work according in, in that way. So you have to be quite eclectic and at the same time very what is it called resourceful. And I saw when I was staying with you, I saw how resourceful you what you are. You're able to juggle things and get things, so many things done. But then again, the, 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 quali then the quality of our spiritual life has to also be a part of spiritual life and not just doing it. And with the ever-changing schedule, quality is getting challenged all the time. So uh, take a look, you know, sit down before each day or maybe before each week, see your schedule and write down when you're going to do what and uh, and see if you can work with that that will give you some assurance at the same time it will give you some strength to carry out your activities in both areas you're i mean you're unique because i know you work sometimes you 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 work throughout the whole night and then the next morning you come back at nine o'clock in the morning and you're tired or you want to take rest but you know then again where's the where's the sadhana and then you have to fit it in somewhere so i think for you 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 need to you know, kind of like to really hone in into a, a schedule and look at it and see how how best you can work with it you have to be a good time manager 
you you have to be a good time manager with your schedule. <laughs> thank you very much. And you have to allow for, you know, the unexpected to come in. <laughs> the unexpected is the kids need more time than you you have available. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Thank you for the guidance. Thank you. Yeah. I think if you seriously look at it, sit down, and then also be, be a little flexible, be ready to adjust accordingly, um, you'll have something to work with. And that'll give you some assurance and some enthusiasm that you know, you're doing the right thing. Yes. Thank you. But then there is a guilt trip from ISKCON. Like, I'm, I'm with the movement for 20 years and the guilt trip is that we have invented words like uh, full-time full -time devotee and part-time devotee. <laughs> so, no, there's no such thing as a, you know, these things. They, they, if you go to temple, this is, I've heard, maybe I'm wrong, I'm not challenging you, Guru Mahal, but I'm just saying that what I've heard that you go to temple and join full time and be a full time devotee. But then, if you're not, then you are a part time devotee. So, what is a part time <laughs> devotee? Well, uh, Prabhupada gave a kind of an analogy to something like that, and this is what he said. He said, he said, if you, he said, he was talking about stock and selling and buying stocks. He said, if you if you stay at the New York Stock Exchange. And you're there all the time you're constantly buying and selling so you're always on top of the activity but if you do stock work from the outside you're not going to get so many opportunities to do the same so he was saying that living in the temple gives you more opportunities for devotional activity whereas living outside uh, you still can perform devotional activities but the opportunities are not as available and you have to arrange everything in your own self so he was using that example to show availability according to position ability ability of service mm -hmm. so that's true yeah but part-time and full-time is just a, a word that doesn't apply because someone living outside can be a full-time devotee and someone living in a temple can be a part-time devotee depending on their consciousness. Okay. And it's Krishna consciousness. It's not temple consciousness or outside the temple consciousness. It's Krishna consciousness. Thank you. I think you hit the nail. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Best wishes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for all the blessings. All glory to you, Mr. Papa. So, um, thank Kishore Mataji's case. It may be unique, but there are other people. I know Malvachaya goes to that too, <laughs> Washington, D.C. Yeah, also has right. to you know do surgery and be there uh question the schedules changing sometimes i i'm sure we've all learned from the advice that you've given um when it comes to the only thing that i've been taught and lived by even though i'm not in that situation that thank you sure is at all and i'm even retired now but to adjust when it comes to uh, the sadhana, when to do it, and sometimes the person is home at a time um, that normally we do in the morning, uh, maybe they just were in the hospital at the time. What to do? What to do? The advice is wonderful, but how to apply it sometimes we might get stuck. And so for me, when you get stuck, what do you do? You appeal to Guru and Goranga. You pray. Yeah. You well, pray. There's That's a... only you pray because you don't always have it. It's just a source of intelligence, so you pray. And and so you get that day done properly. You know, uh, the, 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 what you have to do 
materially and spiritually, especially spiritually is the most important material is necessary. Well, to make it to make it pleasant on all levels or make it spiritual on all levels, there's that verse from the Mahabharata, which is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which says that all the rules and regulations follow two rules and regulations. And that is, we'll always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. So, yeah, and we have to practice always remembering Krishna. It's when we forget Krishna, we get confused. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. That was a very nice question for by Prem Kishore. And I like your point, Maharaj. And that was a very nice reminder for, for me, too, about the full-time and part-time uh, lingo that sometimes plays on devotees mind that it um that was nice because i i do know many devotees who don't live in the temple and live outside and they work but they're very full-time in their in their consciousness very yeah, very much so it's a way sometimes to to see superior and inferior and which is artificial and, and wrong and it's also another way to give an excuse that I live outside the temple, so I can't be so Krishna conscious. <laughs> yes, Marge, yes. Thank you so much for um, adding light to that. Thank you. Are there any other questions? We just passed the eight o'clock hour, and I know it's close to Marge's lunchtime in Slovenia, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> The lunch hasn't even come yet, so I'm still good. <laughs> if there are um, if there are no questions, uh, let me just go down the list so I don't forget any, so I don't miss anyone. That is, if um, you have any questions, any comments, okay. And if there isn't much, would you like to chant around before lunch comes? It's, oh it's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. This is the best meal. This is the. <laughs> The what they call it, the appetizer, <laughs> <laughs> which is usually better than the meal. <laughs> but let me let me get get my uh, equipment ready here, so I'll be right back. Yes, March, no problem, March. Okay, so we'll begin by invoking the mercy of the Panchatattva, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Sivasari Gaur, Bhaktivinam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna Hare. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Okay, so <coughs> Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadakar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Thank you so much, Maharaj. If we remember Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we pray to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whatever we need will be provided automatically and most appropriately. Mahaprabhu is very merciful. Whatever we need for devotional service, 
will automatically come by his mercy. There you go. That was such nice, Mars. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's true. Thank you so much. It's true. Yeah, it's true. He's very merciful. A lot of times we run to Krishna and we forget about Mahaprabhu, but Mahaprabhu is the, is the way to Krishna. <laughs> Marge, it, it, it's interesting that you say that because, and, and it's so true because I've heard your body say, you know, Krishna, Krishna. And I think last week, I forgot which class it was, that one devotee was saying that we are followers of Lord Chaitanya and we forget that, you know, like you said, we just run to Krishna and we forget about Lord Chaitanya. Thank you so much for reminding us. Yeah, I'm reminding myself too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marge. And thank you to all the devotees for joining us. Vanchaka Pibyas Chakri Pasindha Vevacha. Patita Nam Pavani Vya Vaishnava Vya Namo Namaha. Heswala Nashandra Mali Swami Ki Jai. Shadha Prabhupada Ki Jai.